Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And happy new year. In the first service, we told that you say happy new year until August. Yes, that was what we were told in the first service. Therefore, happy new year. Yeah, for our visitors, my name is Beatrice Waitaka. And I'm born again. I am a daughter in this house. And I want to thank God for his grace upon my life, upon my family, and upon the body of Christ, and also upon our nation. I remember yes, not yesterday, on Wednesday. I was ministering here on Wednesday. And as Pastor Paul has prayed, it is us to redeem the name of Roy Sambu. It will be redeemed on our knees. We don't join the crowd. Stand out and redeem the name of Because there are good things that happen in Roy Sambu. And we are sh- sharing, I was telling them that, you know, Makanga, Makanga are the ones who gives us, who names the stage. Are you aware? They are the ones who name a stage. So, I was saying, what do you think we refuse. It is us who can redeem the name of Roy Sambo. Are we together? Yes. That was not part of my message. It was just by the way. Yes, this morning I want to talk about consequence of disobedience. Consequence of, dis- of disobedience. And you know in life, life is about choice. And every choice has a consequence. And this year, our theme for this year is threshing the mountains. There are so many things we are going to thresh before we reach the mountain that we are going to, 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 to thresh and make it chaff. We are going to read from the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 13 in the message translation. 1 Kings. It's a long one, but I'll pick. You can read it to your own time. The Bible says in the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 13, and then this happened. Just as Jeroboam was at the altar, about to make, give me verse 1. And then this happened just as Jeroboam was at the altar, about to make an offering. A holy man came from Judah by God's command. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you because you never gather your people in vain. This word may be for one person in the whole of this congregation. And that's why you gave it to us and you brought that person to this place. Oh God and our Father, come and breathe in your word. The job of us is going to bring a difference in the life of somebody in this congregation this morning. Just for your own glory. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Verse number two. And preached and preached this my thing. These were God's orders to the altar. Altar, altar, God's message. A son will be born into David's family named Josiah. The priest from the shrines who are, who are making offerings on you, he will sacrifice all, all you human bones burnt on you. Allow me not to read the whole of it because of the interest of time. This was during the reign of King Jeroboam. And the saddest bit is that there was no messenger qualified to be sent to the northern kingdom of Israel because of what was happening during his reign. It is a sad commentary that in the spiritual realm, we may reach somewhere that there's nobody, there's no voice in the house of God. There's no voice in church. There's nobody who can foretell what will happen in the church some years to come. This is not supposed to be our portion. There were no priests during his reign. Imagine a nation like Kenya without a priest. Don't think about yourself. Think about your generation. Four generations from where you are now, they did not meet any priest who they can consult concerning their spiritual life. And the Lord, because he's a God full of mercies, he brought somebody from Judah all the way to Israel. And this man had no name if you read the whole of that chapter from verse 1, verse number 13, there's nowhere that this man was given a name. But the Lord said he brought a man, a man of God from Judah and sent him to King Jeroboam. When he came to where this, this king was, he met him preparing to offer offerings. And this man was directed by God 
to go and break down the altar, the high place. He burned the, 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 to bring down the, the high place and to burn and also to crush it to powder and burn the wooden image. That was what the Lord has commanded this man, a man who has known him. Therefore, God can use you even without a name. Don't wait for, the, for you to be called a pastor or a bishop. God can even use you without a name. What he's looking for is obedience in you. Are you obedient to the word of God? Therefore, Jer Jeroboam's action was immediate. He sought to silence the messenger rather than respond to the message. And those are the times that you are living now, friends. You can tell somebody, the Lord said, he's telling you, let the Lord speak to me. He, can also, he knows me. He sent you, he knows me. He can also speak to me. Those are the times that you are living. So when this man of God came from Judah, first and foremost, Jeroboam thought, this one is a competitor, so I want to silence him. And the Bible says that, we, we, let me not preempt. So let's go to verse number 7. Verse number 7 to 10. Then the king invited the holy man. Join me for a meal. I have a gift for you. Allow me to, to, to go back, Kidogo. When this man was sent by God, there was a condition. Just as when you got born again, God gave you a condition. You should not do this. You should not do this. You maintain boundaries. This man who was sent, the man of God that was sent from Israel, from Judah, they told him, when you go and perform what I've got requested to go and do, do not eat or drink or come back the same way that you went. Use a different way. So when this man went and met Jeroboam, in the altar, in, 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 in the temple. One thing he did, he rebuked the altar. And the Bible says that everything at the altar fell into pieces. Number two, when Jeroboam saw what has happened, he tried to curse this man of God. When he stretched his hand to curse the man of God, the hand withered. It cannot go back. And the Lord, because he's full of mercy, Remembered mercy upon Jeroboam and his hand was restored. When he saw that his hand is restored, he asked this man, can we go to my place that I give you a, a, a glass of water and a meal. But this is what he did. The man of God declined Jeroboam's invitation because the Lord had told him, don't eat or drink. Many servants of the Lord, friends, and this is what is eating the church, is that when you are called to go and minister, you are looking for a kickback. Bible says, Paul said, freely you've been given. Freely give. But that is not the, the time that you are living. You are saying, yes, I came. I need some. You can put something at the feet of the apostle. And something, see your, see your mashilingi, this something is something. You want even to feel the, 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 the weight of the envelope. The Lord knew if this man we take, which ate anything or drink, he'll take the glory. So the Lord told him, when you go and do whatever I ask you to go and do, do not eat or drink. Jeroboam said, I'll give you a reward. Jeroboam quickly and naturally, given the circumstances, embraced the man of God as a friend. He wanted to refresh and reward him. The man of God refused the invitation based on a prior warning from God. Jeroboam's invitation who demonstrate fellowship with adultery. But this man remembered, before I came to this place, I was given instructions. When I saw a we go to verse 10. Verse number 10. Then he left, yes, it is okay. Then he left by a different road than the one on which he had walked to Bethel. Verse 11. There was an old prophet who lived in Bethel. His sons came and told him the story of what the holy man had done that day in Bethel. Told him everything that had happened and what the holy man had said to the king. Verse 12. Their father said, which way did he go? His sons pointed out the road that, is, that the holy man of Judah had taken. He told his sons, saddle my donkey, when they had saddled it, he got onto it. 
He got on and rode after the holy man. He found him sitting under an oak tree. He asked him, are you the holy man who came from Judah? And the young man said, yes, I am. Here we are talking about an old prophet and a young prophet. This old prophet, yes, he used to. And I want to submit to you this morning. That is a very dangerous thing for you to be saying, I used to do. When I got born again, I used to do missions. When I got born again, I used to evangelize. When I got born again, what happened? This old prophet only was left with a name that I was a prophet. But now he, there's nothing he's doing. Because all the wickedness that was happening in Israel, he was in Israel. And God had to look for somebody from Judah to come and rescue his people because God has a remnant. But was Sifiwe. This demonstrates that not every godly person left for Israel, well, sorry, that not, not, that not every person left Israel for Judah. There is one. In every generation, God has some remnants. Even now, you may look at this and say, now who is born again? Oh no, who is born again? I want to submit to that. There is a remnant, even this generation. Elijah thought he was, was the only one. He said, I better die because there's no one that is remaining. The Lord said, I have preserved for myself 7,000 that have not bowed to the king of Baal. Even now, God has preserved himself. They might be in a cave somewhere, they've been in this church or somewhere, but the Lord has preserved himself because in every generation, there is a remnant. The old man or the old prophet said, come home and eat bread. This prophet from Bethel, from Bethel invited the unnamed man of God to come to his home as Jeroboam had invited him. Remember, number one, the first invite, this young man or this man from Judah made it or he succeeded. Now, this is a, next, a, a second invite. And a second invite from somebody who is on the same caliber like him, a man of God. And above that, a prophet. But let's see. Lo and behold. The man of God refused. Under the same reason, he refused Jeroboam. That God had specifically told him to return to Judah without accepting hospitality and to return a different way also. Are we together? Verse number 18. Verse 18. But he said, who said? The old prophet. He said, I'm also a prophet. Just like you. And an angel came to me with a message from God, which was a lie. Bring him home. No, the prophet was telling the, the man from Judah that the prophet, the, the angel told him, bring that man, come with him home with you and give him a good meal. But the man was lying. So even prophets do what? Old prophet do what? Lie. Verse number 19. So the holy man went home with him and they had a meal together. That was the end of his ministry. That was the end of his destiny. Friends, how many people have invited you to their home? And you are warned by the Lord not to go, not to return the same way. But you said, no, this man was, was used by the Lord. Or this man was sent by an angel and you gave in. Today, I want to go to somebody. Wherever you lost your destiny. But the Lord is saying, I am a God of many chances. Come back to me. He was lying to him. The prophet from Bethel gave a false word. Imagine, he can even lie with God. He gave a false word from God, trying to persuade the man of God from Judah to change his course from doing what God told him. Whose report will you believe? Times that you are living now, there are so many voices. Whose report will you believe? There are and have always been false prophets to, contra to contradict the word of God. The rain is very slim for you to know the truth and the lie. It all began in the Garden of Eden. When God said to Adam and Eve that in the day that you eat the forbidden fruit, surely you will die. The Lord had given conditions and a promise. But the enemy knew 
I must also come and raise my voice. He came and told Eve, are you sure the Lord said that? Are you sure that is what the Lord said? Are you sure you heard or it is your, your husband who was told and then he came and told you? The moment you start engaging with the devil, you are down. The moment you give the devil a mileage, are you sure? Look at your age. Are you sure you'll get, you, you'll get a husband? Are you sure you get married? Look at your, your family. Are you sure you can drive? Who in your family have driven? Are you sure? The moment you give the enemy marriage, friends, you are done. That is the end of your destiny. Now Eve is now faced with a choice. Do I believe the word of God or the word of Satan? And of course, she gave in. Just like the, 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 like the young man or the man from, from Judah. Eve gave in. And that's why we are, in the, we are in the lives that we are living now. All these challenges and tribulations and temptations because of one person who gave in to the voice of the enemy. God had said to the young prophet, you are not to eat or drink in that place. I know we are fasting in this church. That's the zone that we are in now. We are fasting. But let me tell you, these are the times that you'll be tempted. People that are so mean will call you for lunch. Somebody who has never even approached you to end a lunch, at my bill, this is the time. It is you. To make up a decision that even the big hotels are going to be here. We to see lunch. These are the time. Those people that are working, people are doing, I need a favor. And I'm going to a person to you. Person to you. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm This is the time that you are going to baptize every sin that, so that you can fit your situation. But remember this. The Lord had warned the man from Judah. But he gave in because this man came and said, the title, that I'm also a prophet like you. But that ended his destiny. As he found the man of God sitting under the oak, probably faint with fatigue and fasting, for he had no refreshment. Remember he went to the temple, broke down every altar and all the offerings, and then he healed Jeroboam. This man was fatigued, and this man was hungry. But remember this, he stood by his ground because the Lord has said. His humanity might have led him to practice this deception in order, in order to persuade him to take some refreshment. He asked him, are you the holy man who came from Judah? If he was a prophet, he would have known that I am the, holy, the, 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 the man from Judah. But he, you know, that's how you go to, to, allow me to say this to the doctors. You go to a doctor, tell the doctor, I'm feeling dizzy, and then the doctor says, is anybody in your family who suffers diabetic? And I say, my yes. Unampatia foundation. Sasa, taza kutuji, nini? Foundation, on top of that, arthritis, on top of that, high blood pressure. Because you gave the information. So this man, the, 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 the prophet, if he was a prophet, he could have known, I am. He could not have asked me a question. He could have, I am the man from Judah. Sometimes, keeping quiet helps. Are you the holy man who came from Judah? If he was a prophet, he would have known. He would not have asked that, that question. But the old prophet's sin was great. For he did not only tell a premeditated lie, but also made God a liar. That a prophet, God sent a prophet, uh, an angel to me, to tell you to go to my place. And all this without any pretense or necessity or benefit to himself. Can you imagine? This old man, he was already old, this old prophet. But this young man, we don't even know if, if he had a family. But I believe he was still a young man. And a man chosen by God for that time. But this old prophet brought down and to an end his ministry. An angel spoke to me, the old prophet told the, the, the young man. Perhaps this was true. And perhaps it was a deceiving angel. Satan has his messengers. Satan and his messengers can appear like angels of light. But the moment you give them a hearing, you are done. Verse number 19. 
So the holy man went home with him. Verse number 19. So the holy man went home with him and they had a meal together. Who was given instructions? It is the young man. Let's go to verse, 19, no, verse 20. There they were, sitting at the table together, when the word of God came to the prophet who had brought him back, the old prophet. Verse number 21. He confronted the holy man who had come from Judah. God's word to you. You disobeyed God's command. Now, this old prophet now, he can accuse the man from Judah. You disobeyed God's command. You didn't keep the strict orders your God gave you. And this man had already eaten. So the covenant is done, is, is broken. You came back and sat down to a good meal in the way, in, a, in the very place God told you, don't eat a scrap, don't, don't eat a scrap, don't drink a drop, for that you are going to die far from home and not be buried in your ancestral tomb. Now, now these are the consequences of disobedience. Now the old man, when he heard from the Lord, he confronted the young, the, the, the young man. The prophet from Bethel was probably older, old prophet, and had the respect of the man of God. The prophet from Bethel identified with the man of God, I am a prophet as you are. The prophet from Bethel claimed a spectacular experience. An angel spoke to me and used to do what he was in tune with the God. Friends, we began the journey of faith. Nobody among us here, because I know you are not here, those are not here, that went to heaven and came back to us, the beauty of heaven. We are all in this journey by faith. And the Lord empowers us every day and gives us strength and the grace so that we can continue where we were called to go. But along the way, we have found so many things. My prayer is that none of us is living in a, in a consequence, living in pain, because at some point, you sold your birthright. At some point, you broke the covenant with the Lord, like this young man. Coming from very far, from Judah, all the way, him picked alone, went to, to, to Israel. And this is what happened. No matter how natural or seductive this enticement was, it was the duty of the man of God to resist it. It doesn't matter what was going to cost him or what is going to cost you. It is upon you to resist. Because many things will come, but it's upon you to resist. He had a word from God to guide his actions and should receive no other word except through dramatic and direct confirmation by God's spirit. The Lord gave him a word. And promised him that I'll go with you and I'll perform miracles and wonders through you. But when you are coming back, don't use the same route. When you finish what I've, 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 the assignment, don't eat. God knows that you are fasting. God knows you can make it without food and without water. Don't compromise. His failure at this point caused his usefulness as a man of God. Imagine a meal. Just a meal made this man to miss heaven. Made this man, even he didn't, he didn't even go back to his family. We'll see that later. When we have received a direct command fresh from the lips of Christ, we must act on it. And not be turned aside by a, suggestion, a different suggestion made to us through the lips of professing Christians. Yes, this one is a Christian. My prayer is, allow the Lord to speak to you because he can speak to you, not to every Christian. Deal with God at first hand. What are you telling me? What are you saying? Because the Lord is still speaking. The heavens are still open. But tune your heart and eye to the heavens and you see what the Lord is saying. Because the Lord is after you. When you have received a direction, sorry, God never contradicts himself in his dealings with his servants. He never contradicts himself. What he said, even 10 years after, it is say, say this. That's why you see the Bible. It was sealed. There's no other chapter or any other verse that can be added to the Bible because it was finished and sealed. Let us be true to his word, refusing to deviate from the path of obedience even by an angel from heaven. Verse number 20.
He comforted. Verse 20, yes. There they were. No, that is verse 20. Let's go to 21. He comforted the holy man who had come from Judah. Let's go to 22. Yeah, 22. When the meal was over, the prophet who had brought him back saddled his donkey for him. Now his mission is accomplished. He saddled the donkey and set him now to go back. Verse number 24. Down the road, away, a lion met him and killed him. His corpse lay crumbled on the road, the lion on one side and the donkey on the other. This man, yes, he left the old prophet's house when he was full. See, he ate and he drank, but he never reached back to where he had come from. Along the way, the Lord sent a lion because the Lord follows his word to perform it. He sent a word. He said, a, a, a lion. The lion killed the man from Judah. I never, he never killed the donkey because the mission and the assignment was for the man from Judah. This was a hard test, but he failed. You should have kept the command by which the Lord your God commanded, no matter how divine and innocent the temptation was to disobey. Verse 22 says, verse 22, you came back and sat to a good meal. Let's go to 23, 24, down the way, yes, 25, some passers-by saw the corpse in a heap on the road. With a lion standing against, standing guard beside, beside it, they went to the village where the old prophet lived and told what they had seen. Let's continue. When the prophet who had gotten him off track had it, he said, it's a holy man who disobeyed God's strict orders. This is what people say, that she did this and this. Yeah, she disobeyed or he disobeyed. The people that put you in track, on, on, on trap, are the ones who are going to, to give you a testimony. God turned him over to the lion who knocked him around and killed him just as God had told him. Let's continue. The prophet told his sons, saddle my donkey. They did. These are the same sons. They saddled the donkey. They brought the information about the man from Judah. They saddled the donkey and the father went. Now he has, he's going now, now to where the corpse was. He rode out and found the corpse in a heap in the road with a lion and the donkey standing there. The, lo the, the lion had it bothered either the corpse or the donkey. Let's continue. The old prophet loaded the corpse of the holy man on his donkey and returned it to, the, to his own town to give it a descent. But because the Lord has said, when you eat, even your corpse will not be taken back to your family members. This man, he placed the, the body in his own tomb. The people mourned, saying, a sad day, brother. Instead of jubilation, it became a mourning day because of disobedience. Whatever has a beginning has an end. This man began very well. From, from Israel, but he ended very miserably because of disobedience. Donkey on one side, lion standing by the corpse. This demonstrates that this was no mere accident, but something unique from God. The lion did not attack the donkey. The dogs, donkey stood by. No, he, he didn't attack the men that were passing by. The donkey was on a special mission of judgment from God. The lion seems to be more obedient than the man of God from Judah. How strange it was for the old prophet to look upon the carcass of the dead prophet and realize my sin was worse than this because he is the one who lied to the man of God. 
my prayer friends, that we pray this days that we are living, that the Lord may give the spirit of discernment so that you can discern the truth and the lie. He laid the corpse in his own tomb, not in the tomb of the man of God from Judah's father, in fulfillment of the previous prophecy. He came alive. He never left this place. Even his corpse did not go back to his people because of disobedience. Allow me to bring some benefits of obedience and then I'll be done. Benefits of obedience. Number one, obedience unlocks eternally abundant life. Obedience unlocks eternally abundant life. You want to live eternally? Learn to obey. Not to obey what people are telling you to obey the word of God. Number two, obedience attracts the gaze of God. Obedience attracts the gaze, the gaze of God. You want to attract the gaze of God? Be obedient. Number three, obedience produces greater intimacy. Obedience produces greater intimacy. You want to be intimate with the Lord? Be obedient. Number four, obedience is a proof of love. Obedience is a proof of love. And love brings us into incredible intimacy with the Father. Love brings us into incredible intimacy with the Father. Friends, the closer you get to God, the more obedient you must be. The closer you get to God, the more obedient you must be. Number five. Obedience builds unshakable foundations. Obedience builds unshakable foundations. In John chapter 2, verse number 25. John 2, 25. John 2, 25. This is the time that Jesus went to the, to the kind of Galilee to a wedding. At some point, the wine got finished. But Mary gave us one of the greatest summary of obedience. Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus, she said, whatever he says to you, do it. He didn't need any help in seeing right through them, but he said, whatever he says, do it. What is that I'm telling you this morning? to do. Whatever he says, do it. That is number six. Whatever he says, do it. Number seven, obedience will help you stand against carnality. Obedience will help you stand against carnality. This man from Judah, he passed the first interview or the first test he did very well. But he was conceived. He, he listened to the old prophet and he forgot what he was told. This man was able to. To, to deceive him because of carnality. He looked at his body. I've not eaten this morning. I am tired. I need a glass of water, I need something to eat. This man was deceived. Just because of a meal, he lost his destiny. Therefore, obedience will help you to stand against carnality. We are all looking forward to thresh some mountains in 
in our life this year. My mountain is not your mountain. But let me tell you, friends, what will make you thresh mountains? It is what is in you. We all know Asak. Simunajua gunia. Asak can only stand because of the content that is inside the sack. Can it stand alone? It cannot even be a sack. It is, you cannot count the sacks because of the content that is inside the sack because it has me to stand. What will make you to stand this year, friends? It is obedience. Obedience to the word of God. Obedience to fellowship. Obedience to networks. Obedience to giving and paying your tithe. The word obedience is, 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 is tied to many things that make you to stand or fall. And I've given the illustration, the illustration of a sack. A sack can only stand because of the content that is inside. Do you want to stand? You must be obedient. The Lord is going for obedience in us. We have missed the way because we want to lead ourselves. This year, the Lord is saying, allow me to lead you. Not to drive you, but to lead you because I know where I'm leading you. I don't know where you are forced to your way. I don't know what happened along the way. You were born again. At some point you said no. This salvation, I think it is not worth it my life. And you gave in. Like the man from Judah, the Lord chose you, appointed you for an assignment. Unless it is over, you are still, you are still in his plan. It doesn't matter what you go through. The Lord is saying, allow me to lead you. People will drive you because people are merciless. But the Lord is going to drive you. He's going to lead you. The Lord led the children of Israel. He never drove them. But he led them in the wilderness for 40 years. And some of them who obeyed reached the promised land. Even as friends, you may lose things in life. You may not have what it takes. But my prayer for you this morning, let the Lord lead you. Because you'll be led by people. At some point, they're going to leave you. Look at what happened to this young man. The Lord chose him, but he fell in wrong hands of the old prophet. Some of us have lost a lot because you had, there's a preacher in town and you went. And you're told, for you to be blessed, put this money in the account. You lost the money, you lost whatever you had, you lost, and also for, lo, lost your focus. Friends, learn to obey. What did the Lord tell you when you got born again? He said, follow me and I'll make you. And that word is what is repeated even in, in our theme for this year. I will make you. Are you ready to be made? Are you ready to stay in the refiner's fire until you are made? The Lord is looking for people whom he can make. Then he can send them. When you are made friends, nothing, and I said again, nothing will make you to look back. This young man forgot that he had from the Lord and he was on assignment. And he had now from the old prophet. The Lord is saying this morning that he's ready to bring you back where you lost your way. What made you to lose your way? People say in the book of Kings that when Elisha, they were prepared to build the house of God, an axe, the head of an axe fell. And he came and asked, where did it fell? This man told him, it fell here. Where he pointed, that is where Elisha took the axe. And that man said, and it was borrowed. This morning, I don't know where the axe you, of, of, of your salvation, of your purity, of your holiness fell. But the Lord is saying, show me where it fell. I'm going to pick it. Because I'm God of restoration. I want to call upon the worship team. And I want us to go before the Lord because I believe we all want to stand. But what will make you stand is what is in you. Like a sack. That is what will make you to stand. Worship team.